Another tool that is sometimes used in Microsoft 365 is public folders. Now, I will tell you, public folders are not nearly as useful as they used to be. They have kind of fallen out of favor because Microsoft 365 groups and especially Teams give you way more capabilities in public folders. Public folders are something we used to use historically where we could store mail or um, contact information or notes or anything that we could store in Outlook, we could store in a public folder for everybody to gain access to it. Now, people typically will use Teams or Microsoft 365 groups to do the same thing, but a lot more effectively. However, some people still want to use public folders. So let's show you how that works. So I'm going to come to my public folders. And it's going to tell me it couldn't find anything. This happens when no public folders are, public folder mailboxes are provisioned. Or they're provisioned and hold for mitigation mode. If you're not currently performing mitigation, then, uh, or migration, sorry. Hold for migration mode. If you are not currently performing a migration, create a public folder mailbox. So the way we do that is we come here. We go to public folders and we add a public folder mailbox, either here or here. This one's showing up down here because we have none. So I'm going to add a public folder mailbox for Lord of the Rings. I'm just going to do L-O-T-R and click add. Now that will create a public folder mailbox. Public folder mailboxes can be accessed by anybody. They are literally public. So I can add another public folder mailbox if I want to add more. Uh, here's my existing one. There's not much you can do with it, honestly. The user hasn't logged into it, so there's no data to return. Um, there's really not a whole lot that you're going to do with them here. Notice we have zero bytes used out of 99 gigabytes. Okay, if I want to delete it, it's here. If I want to refresh, it's here. Okay, I can have different public folder mailboxes, and then each public folder mailbox can have multiple things in it. So if I come back here to public folders, now it doesn't give me my warning because I have a public folder mailbox. So now I can add a public folder and I can choose whether it's mail enabled or not. Mail enabled means you can email something directly to it. And I am going to do this for the fellowship. So I'm going to create a folder for the fellowship to use and click add. Now at this point, somebody can log in. There's no subfolders here. It's not mail enabled. Somebody can log in to uh, Outlook or Outlook on the web, and they can view public folders, and they'll open the public folder LOTR mailbox, and in there they will find a folder called Fellowship. And then they can copy things into that folder. So if I enable this, by the way, as if I make this mail enabled, then you can mail email something to that address, and it will go into that public folder for people to be able to... I, use later on or reference later on. So that's really all it takes to create public folder mailboxes. We come here, we create the mailbox, we come here and we create folders underneath that mailbox and then anybody who connects to that mailbox can use those folders and anything that is kept underneath them. So like I said, it's not something that gets used a whole lot. It is something that was used on a, not on a regular basis, but a little more regularly prior to some of the tools being developed in Microsoft 365. So it is something that you may run into at some point in your life. You may run into people who don't want to migrate things to a Microsoft 365 group or to a Teams group. They prefer this method. This is how we can manage it.